everybody welcome back to another bee mother review and today we've got another piece from figurama collectors this is from their elite diorama series it's called ragnarok thor now i know when you hear the name thor probably your mind's going to go immediately to long blonde hair flowing red cape you know the guy that you see on my shirt here but you know first glance at the statue you can see this isn't that version of thor this is based on Walter Simonson's creator-owned series with IDW Comics, Ragnarok Thor. And um, there's two volume hardcover volumes out right now. Um, I hope the third one is in the works because the story's not quite finished in, in volume two. But a really cool series if, if you're looking for something a little different. Great artwork, uh, great story so far. Uh, so check that out. Um, basically, the premise of the story is... Um, as the name would suggest, Ragnarok has already happened and um, Thor himself was kind of missing in action during that time when it's occurring. Um, nobody knows what happened to him or where he went. Um, but what happens is, you know, all the gods are killed, basically. Uh, the world is sort of thrown into despair. Uh, there's no sun and no moon, so it's this eternal kind of dusk and darkness. Uh, the world is kind of overrun with these undead Draugr uh, or zombies. I'm going to call them zombies for the rest of the, the review because it's easier to say. Uh, but that like these three guys here are kind of swarming the, the land, right? And so the remaining mortals, uh, humans and dwarfs and elves, uh, are kind of on the run from these guys. And so Thor, he's actually chained up in this dungeon. Um, nobody really knows where he is except for one guy. The guy who, um, you know, the Lord of the Dead, who is in, uh, in charge of all these, uh, bringing all these undead to the, the surface. Um, he knows where Thor is and he charges these assassins to go and kill the last god. Um, but he doesn't tell them it's Thor. He says it's the stone god, right? Um, so they go in there and unknowingly free and awaken Thor, who looks himself like he could be undead. Uh, he's in pretty rough shape. He's been kept alive. Uh, for centuries by his little squirrel friend uh, named Ratatosk and who's been feeding him apples during this whole time and um, so he looks worse for wear but he is a, he's, he's still a living uh, being so um, he's awakened to this world where um, you know that he doesn't recognize and he has to go and and try and save the world basically um, so really cool story, really cool uh, premise, just a different twist on the, the story that we kind of all know. And, um, you know, the statue uh, itself, um, kind of uh, a, an homage to, to that series. And um, let's see uh, how the statue turned out in the review. Let's do it. We're going to move first into the sculpt and design for this statue. I believe it was sculpted by someone named Rihad Kasim. Uh, I know I'm butchering that name, so I apologize for that. But I'll put I'll spell it out properly in the credits at the end of the at the end of the video. Uh, and the concept design by Gerald Singh, who's done a lot of concept work for Figurama, really good artist. Both of these guys, you can uh, Google their names and find them on ArtStation or Facebook and and see their portfolios. Some really cool stuff there. Uh, but this statue, uh, there's lots of little Easter eggs thrown throughout that sort of tie into the story. So it's very, very cool. So let's check it out. The base here, the pedestal part, really nice pattern along the outside. Gives it a real kind of Norse look to it. Um, I like that. And they've kind of copied that onto the, the art on the side of the box there. Uh, so I like that. Now the rocky base he's on, you can see sort of you know, remnants of civilization. Uh, these ruins kind of throughout. Uh, on the back here, you can see these two TV screens, and then uh, this part here uh, with the wire sticking out, and you got another piece here on the other side. Um, the one kind of remnant of technology in this world is, is Dwarven technology, and um, Thor, uh, there's this gate that Thor can activate with his hammer, and that gate can allows him to transport to Asgard, and so. This, I believe, is uh, remnants of that Dwarven Gate. So really nice uh, story elements there. you got the tree. It's sort of a dead-looking tree. So again, another symbol of this, of the despair of the world that they live in. 
Uh, could also be uh, um, the world tree that's sort of referenced a few different times in the book. Um, so a really cool base that he's standing on. The figures look great as well. Uh, you got the Draugir or the zombies, uh, the three of them. I love the interaction of the three guys. You got the one on the back who's sort of fallen. You know, Thor's probably already dealt with him. Uh, this guy here, you can see the lightning strike uh, from Thor's hammer taking out these two guys here. And on here, this one, you know, the rib, his rib cage is kind of opened up and you got this big wound opened uh, just under his armpit there. So that's really cool how it interacts with the lightning. And on this guy, it's kind of cutting through his mouth and his lower jaw is uh, kind of detached and falling off. So, you know, these two guys have seen better days, we'll just say that. Um, so really cool, you know, their costumes, lots of detail there and texture, folds and wrinkles sculpted in there. Uh, so lots of detail on them. And then Thor himself has lots of details here too. Uh, nice texturing on his costume, wrinkles and folds again. Um, his hair as well. The gauntlets that, you know, he's got these big metal gauntlets and those are a key part of the story. Uh, that allows him to catch his hammer when it's returning to him without damaging his hand. Um, you got this sort of metal uh, shoulder pad armor here uh, with these hooks on the side and you got the hooks on the side of his boots uh, and those are part of um, you know the, the what they chained him down with in in the dungeon um, for all those centuries so nice tie into the story again another uh, little Easter egg is the the amulet on the front of his chest uh, it's smashed here so um, in the story uh, his little squirrel friend, uh, Ratatosk, uh, kind of tricks the assassins that are in his tomb to destroy that amulet. And that's what was keeping him captive. So as soon as that's destroyed, Thor kind of breaks free of his confines and starts, um, well, let's just say the story kind of starts from there, right? So uh, lots of little uh, nods to the story throughout. Um, I like the detailing on the hammer. It's very accurate, uh, exactly as it looks in the comics. So lots of details. You'll notice Thor's lower jaw is missing. Um, you know, in the story, they kind of make fun of that a few times. He gets asked a couple different times, uh, you know, how can you talk with no lower jaw? And he's like, whatever, deal with it. You know, it's a trick or whatever. So uh, kind of a funny part uh, to the story there. Um, kind of explaining that look, but not really explaining it at the same time. So I, I found that pretty uh, humorous. Uh, Again, so tons of details here. I think the lightning, uh, I love the, the jagged look to the lightning. Uh, very, very cool. Um, as I said, lots of detail here to, to take in. Very story accurate. Uh, lots of little Easter eggs, as I said. So really, really nice job on this sculpt and design from Figurama. Wise on this statue, you'll notice a lot of the colors on the base and the zombies are kind of dim and dreary, a lot of brown and gray, uh, which is uh, which is kind of accurate to the again this world that they live in. Um, but nice clean paint application everywhere. Um, really, I like the the finish that they gave to all the armor. Uh, kind of a real worn, uh, metal, metallic look to all of that. All the little um, studs on their straps and 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 loincloths and stuff all have a metallic finish to it and they're all nicely finished no uh, paint spillage anywhere there um, so really nice job throughout the base and the and the zombies Thor himself again I like how the blue uh, his blue um, outfit really makes him stand out amongst the, the rest of the statue uh, the red amulets the gold trim around those as well all, all really nicely painted with no no uh, errors really anywhere that I can see. Um, the teeth are nicely painted and detailed. Uh, you'll notice his eyes. He's got one blue eye and one green eye. Um, I'm not going to tell you how he gets that in the story. You'll have to read it to find out, uh, but it's kind of cool. Uh, so again, that, that, that is on purpose, uh, the different colored eyes. Um, so paint-wise, yeah, really nice job here. There's nothing really to complain about at all. Right, production and build quality on the statue. Again, with this piece, I did do an unboxing video separately. So you can check that out to see the, all the packaging, how it's packed up, um, how to assemble it. 
Uh, so I'm not going to go through that in too much detail here. The one thing I am going to point out is I found it easier to attach the lightning with this guy on the, on the right hand side, or my right hand side, uh, with him off the base. So I took him off and then you can attach the lightning to the guy at the front, the back of the hammer, and then it also attaches to the jaw and then you can kind of fit him into place. I found that the easiest way to do it. Uh, but the statue itself, it's really, you know, it's quite large as you can see for a 1-6 scale piece. Um, and it's, it's quite heavy as well. It's got a nice uh, quality, solid feel to it. Um, so nothing to complain about there. The parts all fit together quite nicely. Um, everything is color coded as well. So you'll notice um, if I take this piece off, you can see the end there is red. And then the, the key where it goes into is red as well. So you just look for the colors and match them up and slot them into place there. So uh, inside the box, you do get a uh, envelope here. Um, it's got a nice one, another one of those nice uh, wax seals on the, on the envelope. Uh, and I actually haven't opened this yet. So I'm going to open it right now and we'll see what's inside together. So very exciting. So let's see what's in there. Uh, we'll be careful not to damage that seal because it looks pretty cool. We'll try to get that off. No. Too bad I kind of made a mess of that. But um, let's see what's inside. Okay, we've got an art print. Let's check that out. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. Uh, so an art print of the statue there. You've got you know, your assembly guidebook. Uh, obviously I didn't use that uh, as I put it together, but uh, if you need it, it is there. It does have the, you know, the box uh, placement inside the box and sort of step-by-step -step instructions uh, to put that in. So let's see what else is in there. You've got your Certificate of Authenticity uh, signed by Walter Simonson himself right there. So that's pretty cool. That's a hand signed uh, certificate. Uh, 200 edition size for this statue worldwide. And there's some more in there. Let's see. Uh, it's a danger about this, handling the swords and how to remove the packaging there. And... Let's see. Oh, you know what? This is a sticker. Again, hand signed by Walter Simonson. Uh, so you can put, there's a spot on the base. There's a little empty square and hand signed sticker that you can put on the bottom of your base if you want. So really nice uh, package of goodies there uh, inside, the, in, inside the packaging that will come with every piece. Um, as I said, really nice quality statue. Goes together nice. Nice, heavy, solid feel to it. Very sturdy. Uh, really nothing to complain about. This is a nice quality statue from Figueroa. We're going to wrap up the review here of the Elite Diorama Ragnarok Thor from Figueroa Collectors. Um, I think this is a piece that's probably going to fly under the radar for a lot of people. Uh, it's kind of a lesser known uh, license, uh, lesser known version of Thor, but it's really cool. As, you, as I said, if you haven't checked out the series by Walter Simonson, um, you know, check it out. It's a really neat take, uh, twist on the Thor story that we all know. Uh, and Figurama, I remember I, at, at Tokyo Wonder Festival earlier this year, uh, I, had, I interviewed the owner of Figurama, Shinab, uh, about this statue, and I kind of asked him, you know, like, what made you decide to go with this? This is this was their first piece that went up for pre-order. Um, you know, so as this was their first design, and they he basically said, you know, I love the story. I, I love comics. I love this story, and they they really treated this as kind of a test statue for them uh, to see if they could do this type of dynamic diorama with all the interaction, you know, all the Easter eggs. Um, lots of detail throughout um, and see if they could pull it off and and you know what I think they really did I think this statue really turned out good if you're a fan of this series if, if you owe it to yourself to check out this piece 
Um, and even if you're just looking for something a little bit different, if you're a Walter Simonson fan, or um, as I said, just something a little bit different for your collection, this is a great piece to check out. So Ragnarok Thor from Figurama Collectors. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Um, as always, we got lots more coming later on in the year and, and later or very soon uh, with more reviews. Uh, there's going to be more episodes of Shelf Space coming up. That's the new uh, chat show I am co-hosting with Gina from Gina B Collecting. So check that out uh, on the playlist uh, below this video. Um, very cool piece from Figurama. I'm really happy with it. Uh, so again, talk to you guys soon.